Vegas, Torino, those, they're on different sides of Nevada. It is 530 of the gnarliest miles in which maybe you can see for 200 of them. It's a marathon. Can your pit crew be faster? They can pick you up a minute a stop, two minutes a stop. How many driver changes do you need? What's the best strategy? Do you Iron Man it and fall asleep at some point because you've been in the car for somewhere between 11 and a half and 14 hours? Can you make it? After the mint, we brought it back to the shop. He put in a brand new motor, brand new transmission, brand new rear end, rebuilt all the shocks and some new tires. So Chris flies us in on this private jet. <laughs> we show up in Vegas, they've got this mansion rented out. They're all out there working on the truck. Do you feel like you can't breathe inside this thing? Yes. We printed a life-size map on the side of his truck, which was really convenient to find out where the next pit is, how many miles we were away, you know, being able to tell where they were at, tell them where we needed to be at. Uh, it was uh, quite a convenient tool to have that we came up with. So the next morning, I wake up, Chris tells me I have to drive his truck. He didn't say anything about this 19-foot uh, trailer attached to the back of it, which uh, luckily I've done a lot of trailering in my life, and I uh, would consider myself a successful trophy truck trailer racer. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Hey, don't drop your dunk, no, no. You're gonna need it, Pia. We get to Beatty, Nevada. We're about an hour early. We are sitting there and it has got to be 130 degrees. I am wondering, am I going to live? Do I have enough water? And then you see your pit crew start driving away from you. And uh, you're just kind of sitting there and you're getting ready and you're like, what do I got to do? And, and what I had to do was not mess the truck up before pit one. That was my 100% goal. I had 13 trucks to pick off in front of me. You don't want to drive in their dust all day. So I'm sitting at the start line and I'm saying, the number one goal is finishing, right? Don't mow these trucks down. Don't get excited. And that flag drops and I can see the guy in front of me. He's 15 seconds. As we come up over the hill, he's picking one guy off, I'm picking him off. And I, I really start to think, this thing has got to last all day. The moment we started the race, the adrenaline was pumping. Uh, you're racing to the next pit stop. So you were anywhere between 20, 60, 70 miles away from where you uh, last left the truck. And you had no idea uh, what condition they were in. Um, you got text message updates that told you every five minutes where the truck was and how fast they were moving. So it was nice to be able to see well, they're still moving at 70 miles an hour. Across 530 miles, there's 14 pits, and they range anywhere from 20 miles apart to 75 miles apart. It's a chase race rather than a lap race, so they've got to chase you through the middle of the desert. So they're racing down the pavement, you're racing down off-road, and sooner or later you're gonna to try to get gas from the mothership and keep driving. And then you're also trying to beat not only the other off-road drivers, but the other pit crews. I can see the next trophy light going up over the hill and you just really start to chase those dust clouds one after another. And you start saying, hey, wait, I'm doing really, really good. I started last and I've passed five trucks. 
that means I am definitely in ninth place right now. And then you say, hey, wait, ninth's not good enough. So you fight that all day long. And uh, I get to pit four and now we got long spans. It's gonna be 90 miles before somebody touches me again. And then you go back into that survival mode, like 90 miles? 90 miles is a lot of dang desert. I am physically sitting in fourth place. I feel like I'm making up the pace. I can see another trophy light in the distance. And here comes pit five. 6003, we are at the end of the pit, right hand side. So what you do when you get to the pit is you pull in, you pull all the stuff out, you get your fuel cans ready, you get your fuel tarps down. Um, you're just set up and ready just in case the truck needs any type of maintenance. Yeah, I need to prep everything. I need to prep the fuel, the tools, jack, waters for the drivers, a little snack. Fast, 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 fast. Everything fast. Rory's jumping in, I jump out. I gotta get him in as quick as he can. I gotta get him out of there. We're gonna fucking finish this bitch strong. Fuck you guys, you're awesome. God would have did. Bring it in. And the truck isn't driving like it should. So I break down what I'm doing to make it go as fast as I can. If the calm suck ass, Cody unplugs and plugs back in. All Chris is doing is yelling at me, telling me what's going on with the truck, but I can't hear anything he's saying other than. It takes a team and you're handing off the baton to your teammate. He is raring and just ready. And he, and he wants it. Everybody back hands up. Go oh, Rory, right. have a good time. Get it. God, me and Andrew are killing it. Dude, we hit some friggin' rollers at fucking 80. Just the whole front of the truck. Whoa, 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 boom. We take off from the pit and we start going. First turn Cody and I come into, I about flip the thing on its side. I didn't know this at the time, but the sway bar was broken. So every time I came into that turn, the back end of the truck would pick up and the front nose would go down and would cause the body to roll. We start watching the tracker and he's clipping along. I told him what the average pace needed to be to gain and he was hitting that pace. Yeah! This invigorates me. It's like free Viagra. <laughs> It really doesn't matter if you're in the truck or in the chase. Uh, I, I think they're both going to be just as enjoyable. Tyrell slaps a book on my lap and says, let's go. How do we get to the next pit? Chase one to 6003. And then we forgot to reset the odometer, and I messed up so much stuff, and we missed them. <laughs> I didn't understand why at the time. <laughs> they drove right by. <laughs> but I got on the radio, and I made it positive, and I said, hey, you're kicking so much ass. <laughs> You're, you're, you're going so fast, we can't catch you. But I was just stoked to keep driving, so I was like, all right, let's, let's go for it. <laughs> we drove right by the road. <laughs> it's another 40, 50 miles that I can drive, so let's do it. So me and Cody just hunkered down and went for it. He's mowing down the dude in front of him. He's catching up from our 19 minute deficit. He gets us down to about nine minutes. And he comes back over the radio and says, dude, we got a problem. Quite a bit and it cuts out on extreme hard right turns. Hey, put the fuel pump back to fuel pump one and two in the middle of the switch. It just cut out on me when I did that, I lost it. At that point, I'm like, we should have kept him in pit. We should have fixed it. We didn't fix it. And then immediately start to work the problem, which is either fuel or air. We have air filters, we have a fuel pump. At the next pit, I radio to the guys, they put the fuel pump in the truck, and now I'm thinking, hey, look, here's our day unraveling. It is a long day. I mean, the desert is, uh, it's a very special place. And uh, it definitely takes a unique person, somebody willing to get dirty and somebody willing to uh, eat some dust. Once you're out there and once you're in it, it's, uh, it's not describable. Driving in a desert race into a sunset with just a trail of dust in front of you that you're following, it's just amazing.
Well, the guy in front of him started to creep away, but we're sitting in the pit and they're getting ready to do a driver change, which I know is gonna take them five minutes. And I only have to put one can of fuel in the car if I don't get in the car. So I get on the radio to Rory and I say, hey, you're driving through 10, no more driver change. You're going to go directly to 11. We're gonna pass him in the pits. We're gonna slide up into third place. We're gonna kill it. Rory radios back and says, what'd you say? No copy, no copy. No driver's change, over. No driver's change, okay. We put one can in. He pulls out and he can see him. He's just gotta get to him. Zook is coming. We pull into pit 11 with about six minutes to spare. We come up with an emergency plan. Andrew gets the filter changed and gotta be under a minute. Eduardo's in there tearing stuff up, tightening the steering. Check the lug nuts, everything. Fluid is not, the truck is not leaking. The suspension, everything. The truck is just had enough. And me and Rory jump in and we still got like 178 miles to go. And we sit in and he says, Welcome back. <laughs> and me and Rory set out to do what we've done since the start of the season, and that's finish the race together. The dust is, it's tough. You have really got to trust your co-driver, and your life is telling you to let off the gas pedal. And your driver keeps saying, straight, 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 it's straight. And the whole time you're like, what is straight? Because I don't know where I'm going, and I can't see anything. We get to pit 13, our last fuel stop. We pull in and man, the pit crew is just alive and on fire. They're all there and it has to be the fastest trophy light pit stop of the entire day. After the truck left the last pit stop, there was almost a sigh of relief from the entire team where we were like, they're gonna make it. We're gonna make it to the finish line. We just passed the last pit stop. We're gonna make it. Man, we come up to the last, I think it's 41 miles. And it is the rockiest, most insane. It wasn't meant for a two-wheel drive truck. And there's just, it, it's flooded out the dirt and it's just rock after rock after rock. I'm jumping over rocks, I'm freaking pounding them. We can just hear the skid plate. And, and we're just laughing and we're having a good time. And we come up over the top of the hill and Reno has never looked better in my entire life. We get to about <laughs> mile 528 point one, and uh, Rory radios into the pits. We are five and a half miles out. We will see you guys shortly. Can you bring us some nice ice waters, please? So I told him, hey, we're coming in, get the champagne. It's been such a great day. We need some waters, we're dehydrated. And we get up to the finish line and we're like, they're two miles out still. Six, zero, zero, three, Rory, you gotta copy. And they're not moving. I can radio best in the desert. They might have someone sitting up there. 15 minutes goes by. They're two miles out still, and they're not moving, and nobody had any idea what was going on. Whatever it is, I'm sure they're just going to fix it and roll on in. Let's hope so. Let's hope nothing is wrong. You can't make this up. Then when I got off the mic with the chase trucks and I tell Chris, I'm like, oh man, this day has been so amazing, so much fun. I, I just, I couldn't explain it. And I told him, I haven't had to get out of the truck once to do anything, not even a tire change out. <laughs> oh, I, I make a sharp left and right as Rory says that, the truck goes. I'm like, Rory, I think I hear a flat. He's like, I'm not getting out to change it. I'm like, whatever. And I lay back in the throttle. <laughs> we go around a corner and I turn right, but the truck goes, whoo. And 
And then I'm like, oh, dude, I think we just broke the rim off. I tell him to sit tight. I'll go change a flat and we can drive in on one axle. I get out of the car and I'm looking around for the flat tire. There's no tire on his side of the truck. So I'm looking around for this tire and it's about 300 feet behind me. So I go get the tire and I get to it and there's an axle sticking out of it. And, and I'm kind of sitting there like this, like, man, these stars are nuts. And I can see the finish line. I can see it. I can see the big blow up, all the lights. It's right there. And Rory comes up to the window with not my tire, but half my truck. And he's like, I think you should get out. We evaluated our situation. We have nothing. Nothing will fix this. We don't have a welder. They're gonna show up. They're gonna pull us off the track. They're gonna give us a DNF. And I start freaking out. We were so close. We just needed two more miles. Six, zero, zero, three, you got to What happened? Did they roll? I think you had no communication. Walkie talkies weren't working. Like we had zero contact with the truck and we had no idea what was going on. We start every idea we can think of. So it took us about an hour of MacGyvering and finding a good way of getting this thing back on all four wheels. And so I grab a tire strap, and out of all the things that you think won't work, I take the tire strap and I hook it from one side to a tiny aluminum fitting with just enough pressure to let it roll. If I stay out of the truck and I walk, we'll get across the finish line. I'll push it. Okay. We're back up and going. Uh, 16 pounds with a strap holding us together. Told you that asshole. And we rolled into the finish line. The whole crew's there, and, and the look on their face is kind of, it's like insane, like, where have you guys been? We were supposed to be at dinner hours ago. Chris had to break it. You went 530 miles through the Nevada desert, off-road without one issue until two miles from the finish line. Why? And so they kind of had like a look of defeat, but victory. It was amazing. I don't care if we broke an axle or a flat tire, finishing that race was just awesome. Fourth was our goal, and this is the second race in a row that me and my team have put together a solid effort and a solid day and come up fourth. And at that moment, you realize that there's nothing else really that matters. You've got your best friends with you in the middle of the desert, and, and you had this opportunity to just live. In Silver State, we drove nine miles on the flat. So I was like, we'll just pull it in on a flat, fuck it. So we made it about, I don't know, from here to that trailer. <laughs> and then we had no axle and a flat. <laughs>